Today I want to talk about the alleged apparitions of Our Lady in Garabandal and I'm going to look at five major problems that face these apparitions, five major challenges to the truth of the apparitions of Our Lady in Garabandal. I should begin by saying I'm not completely against these apparitions. I have been to Garabandal twice and a lot of the apparitions really interest me, intrigue me, and I'm generally unsure whether they're true apparitions or not. So this video isn't made uh, out of disbelief of the apparitions, but really posing some challenges that I'd love to hear answers to from the Garabandal followers. So the first of the challenges to the veracity of the apparitions in Garabandal. So the first major problem are the acknowledged diabolical influences at Garabandal. It's really interesting that in the biggest book or biggest study on Garabandal, she went in haste to the mountains. Uh, the author gives a quotation from Conchita where she acknowledged the presence of the devil at work in Garabandal. Here's the quote from book two of She Went in Haste to the Mountain. And in what happened to us during those years, I see the work of the devil too. I remember, for example, the voice that we heard in the great darkness. And the other day, on which Loli and Jacinta intended to jump down from the choir loft of the church. At the time, I wasn't seeing the Virgin, and I was near the main altar. I remember that they came down and touched my face, asking me, Are you Conchita? On that day, it certainly seems to have been the devil. End of quote. So Conchita is acknowledging that there were definitely instances where the devil was at work. She mentions the time with the strange voice. That's really, it was a really weird occasion. What happened was the children saw Our Lady for a sustained period of time and she was smiling at them and she didn't say anything. And then she said to them, I'm going to go away now, but don't be afraid about what is going to happen. And Our Lady disappeared and they were covered in a tremendous darkness and they heard this hissing sound that was whispering, come to me, come to me, follow me, follow me. And they were really frightened by this. And one of the girls, um, Mary Cruz, said to the voice, tell us who you are or we will go away. And it actually occurred again on another occasion. The same voice was heard in the darkness and the children frightened asked, who are you? And there was no response. So there's definitely some diabolical influence at Garabandal. The children acknowledged it themselves. And so that poses a problem to Garabandal. If Our Lady is in some way telling them, oh, the, listen to this voice, don't worry. And then they're so frightened by it and they think it to be the devil. How much is reliable with the rest of the messages of the alleged virgin? So this is the first problem that faces the apparitions at Garabandal. Perhaps this voice wasn't the devil. The children were just really frightened by it. Perhaps it was Almighty God. There are possible answers to this one, but Conchita herself acknowledges the devil was present at Garabandal, and that's problematic. So this second problem concerns the account given by Don Valentin, the parish priest at the time of Garabandal. And actually he was a believer in the apparitions, but he offers this account of the one of the initial apparitions of the angel, of Archangel Michael to the children. The Archangel has appeared as a boy of about 14 years old. And in one of his early apparitions to the children, um, he compliments the children on their fine teeth. And then afterwards, he shows them his beautiful, full grin of shining white teeth. And then afterwards, he kisses them, each of them on their cheeks and says, farewell until next time. 
it just strikes me as unusual behavior for the prince of the heavenly armies. You know, like I said, Don Valentin, this parish priest, he actually was a firm believer in the apparition. So this obviously wasn't a, a killer for him that the angel displayed such unusual behavior. But it seems to me a problem with the apparitions at Garabandal. So there's a lot to say on this topic, the unfulfilled prophecies of Garabandal. And these I'm taking from the book Garabandal, The Village Speaks. And in this book, we find some really interesting unfulfilled prophecies. The first one is of the religious vocation of Jacinta's, of no, Conchita's cousin, Pepe Luis. Um, Conchita in ecstasy stops where her cousin Pepe Luis is lying and said out loud in an intelligible voice as though answering her vision, Ah, this one will be a priest? Ah, good. She then gave Pepe a crucifix to kiss and uh, moved on. But Pepe was then three or four years old and he's never become a priest. Um, And it was Maximina Uh, the aunt of Conchita, who has related this prophecy, which was never fulfilled. The second unfulfilled prophecy concerns Father Louis Andreu, the Jesuit priest who died shortly after seeing a future completion of the miracle of Garabandal. He's on the way home saying it's the most wonderful day of my life and he is found shortly after to be dead. Well, Conchita receives a locution from Our Lady about Father Louis Andreu, and in 1964 she sedates, again I'm taking this from The Village Speaks, On the day after the great miracle, the body of Father Louis Andreu will be taken out of the grave intact. And again, Conchita writes to Father Louis's brother, Father Ramon, I had a locution in which I was told that on the day after the miracle, they will take your brother out of the tomb and his body will be found incorrupt. Well, the same book relates that in the beginning of 1976, the Jesuits removed the bodies of the priests who were buried in the cemetery and they were transferred elsewhere. The body of Father Luis Andreu was found at that time to be in a skeletal state and his remains are now in the ossuary of the Society of Jesus in Loyola. Maybe he will be found incorrupt at the time of the miracle but he's certainly not incorrupt now and that's a problem for the apparitions of Garabandal. I need to make a passing reference at least to the failed miracle, failed prophecy concerning Joey Lamangino, a blind man who was lacking eyes to whom Conchita said, uh, you will have your sight restored at the time of the great miracle and you will see the great miracle with new eyes. It never happened. Joey passed away a few years ago now. Another seemingly failed prophecy from Garabandal, though admittedly Joey never lost faith in the apparitions, even at the very end of his life when his sight had not been restored. So there are three unfulfilled prophecies of Garabandal, and I could have listed more, but we'll stop at that number. So here we turn back to the book, She Went in Haste to the Mountain, where we find a really curious anecdote about Conchita, Loli and Jacinta. Conchita has just had her little miracle, the Milagruco, and the other two children... Loli and Jacinta announce that there is going to be a miracle for them as well and they announce we are going to have a little miracle before the end of the year and the year continues and the end of the year arrives and there is no little miracle and the town is upset by it and Conchita relates to a priest that they did have plans for a little miracle And the little miracle, she seems to be at this particular point willing to maybe dish a bit of dirt on the other two children. They've fallen out. 
Conchita explains that the miracle was going to be the supposedly miraculous discovery of a buried statue of Our Lady. The two children were going to bury a statue of Our Lady and then say that the apparition had told them where to find the statue and miraculously they would get the statue and say, wow, the Virgin showed us where the statue was. How could we have known otherwise? And then, linked to this, Conchita gives us the anecdote of how she told the other children that if they ate a certain powder, they would levitate and gain powers. And Maria Loli actually has a go and eats the powder. She doesn't levitate. Instead, she gets a bad stomach ache because it's some kind of toothpaste powder that they used to use back in those days. So she gains a bad stomach ache. Apparently, this was just Conchita's sense of humour. But it makes you wonder if there were plans to concoct a miracle involving the recovery of a statue or miraculous levitation, supposedly miraculous levitation. Can we trust some of the other supposed miracles of Garabandal? Perhaps they were also concocted by the children in a similar manner also. So now the final big problem with Garabandal. And that seems to me that if you really look at some of the purported locutions and messages from the children, it all adds up that the miracle, the warning and even that chastisement probably ought to have happened by now. For starters, there's the announcement concerning the three popes and maybe four if you take uh, Conchita's addition later on that John Paul I didn't really count in the prophecy of the popes because his reign would only be really short. But anyway, we were promised that the end of times would have been inaugurated by the time of the fourth pope, Benedict XVI. But now Benedict XVI is gone and we're into the reign of the next pontiff and we still haven't had the features that are meant to typify the end of times. So we are left wondering, why haven't they occurred? Another really significant piece of information, again, which can be found in Garabandal, The Village Speaks, is there's an interview in which Mary Lowley says that she will see the warning. That she is fearing the warning because she knows that when it happens to her, it will disturb her. She will experience fear. However, as you all probably know, Marie Lowley died a few years ago and the warning hadn't occurred at the point of her death. Finally, in all of the early interviews of Conchita back in the 70s, she's quite insistent that the miracle, which she knows the date of, is going to occur soon. And it hasn't occurred. And we are now 40 years in the future. Perhaps we can say that she was speaking like a biblical prophet, that she's saying soon, but really she means quite a long time. It certainly seems the more you read the older documentation, the more you doubt the chronology of the unfolding of the warning, the miracle and the chastisement. It seems like it was meant to happen soon, but it never happened. And so now we are 50 years later and they still haven't occurred. So those are my top five concerns, problems about the apparitions of Our Lady at Garabandal. And you know, like with all of the apparitions in which some future miracle is promised, we have the advantage, a lot of us have the advantage, that it's likely that we're going to live out the lifespan of some of the seers. Conchita is in her mid-70s now, and she definitely is meant to be alive at the time of the warning miracle chastisement. That's definitely meant to happen. So Garabandal has a sell-by date, and the sell-by date is rapidly coming to its expiry point. God willing, we will live to see the fulfillment of the warning, the miracle, the chastisement. Maybe not the chastisement, but God willing, we will see these things come to pass in all of their glory. God willing, we will see the great revival of the Catholic Church as a result of the miracle. But, you know... There are problems with the apparitions of Garabandal and I'd love to hear the response 
from the Garabandal experts. May God bless you. May our Blessed Mother pray for you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.